Hi, I'm MJ Hecox here at Leopold's, where we like to pair our bottles with books. Hey everyone, Francesca Hong. I am the co-chef and co-owner of Morris Ramen. I am so excited to prepare uh, squash salad with zephyr squash, caruso squash, with a nori chef or goat cheese, as well as a local roast, uh, rushing waters uh, roasted trout. So for the wine pairing, we have selected an orange wine. So orange wine, if you're not familiar with it, is wine that has been left on the grape skins of white grapes. So rosé is made from red grapes and orange wine is made from white grapes. And that extra time on the skin, that skin contact contributes texture and it contributes flavor. And it's a very different profile than a lot of white wines are. We selected this wine because you can see that it is orange in color, but it also contributes orange flavors like citrus orange flavors or nectarine um, to this dish, which can pair really well with savory, earthy foods like squash. Uh, but the acidity can also be really refreshing and complementary to tart foods like pickled foods or fermented foods. So I think this is going to work really well for your dish, Francesca. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Hi. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Cooking with the Cap Times. We're so happy to have you, whether you're watching at home or watching in person here. Tonight's guest chef is Chef Francesca Hong from Morris Ramen. We're very excited for the delicious summer squash salad she's going to make for us. Before we get into that, I do want to thank our sponsors of this series. So our official kitchen sponsor is Kesnix. That's where we are this month and every month. They host us in their beautiful innovation center. But you can also come here and just browse their big store. Shop like a chef. Get everything you need to be fully supplied in your kitchen. I guarantee you they have what you need here. We're so grateful to them for hosting us. They're such a wonderful space for us. And then I do also want to thank our official wine pairing sponsor, Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. Madison's bookstore for night owls, going to bookstores at night, drinking cocktails while you browse books. This is my dream. So I love Leopold's. <laughs> so glad they're a sponsor. They always pick a uh, wine to pair, especially with the dish that each of our chefs make. You just saw a little intro about this month's wine. If you want to try that wine yourself, if you ask questions throughout this demonstration tonight, at the end of the night, we'll pick one question, the most interesting question, whatever got a laugh, I don't know, we'll see. And then that person will win a bottle of wine that they can go pick up from Leopold's. Another way you can try these wines is if you are a in person here joining us. And the way to do that for future events is to become a Cap Times member. Members get first dibs to be invited to come sit and enjoy this demonstration live, taste the dish from the chef afterwards, enjoy a glass of wine, it's a fun time. If you'd like to become a member, you can do that at membership.captimes.com. I think that's all we have. So without further ado, I will turn it over to our food editor, Lindsay Christians. Thank you so much, Beck. Thank you. Yay, Jay Beck. Yay. That feel just gets smoother every month. I'm so impressed. <laughs> I love it. I've practiced. So uh, I'm here tonight with Francesca Hong. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm so excited to be here. I am so glad you're here. This is great. I, I feel like because I wrote the chapter in the book a few years ago about your history, I like know everywhere you've worked. <laughs> I know all this stuff about like, well, you started as a server when you were a teenager and like La Brioche True Food and Restaurant oh, Magnus yeah, and Grace. Yeah. Like I remember all of it. So um, do you want to really quick give an intro to a little bit of your culinary background and then also yeah, Morris Ramen. Absolutely. So um, I was so fortunate to be able to come up uh, in Madison cooking in some of the most beloved restaurants in town. Um, I was actually in school to, I was applying for J school. I thought I was going to be a sports journalist. Nice. I wanted to be like <laughs> on Sports Center anchoring, um, but dropped out to cook full time. And so I started at La Brio True Food. I worked at Restaurant Magnus. I had the honor of working with uh, Chef Tori Miller at the opening of Gray's. Yeah. And then 43 North was the first restaurant where I um, kind of, you know, was that was my full-time job. I wasn't working three other places at the same time. Um, and worked my way up to become the executive chef there when I was 23. Yeah, you were so young. <laughs> I like looked back at that story and I was like, oh my God, wow, yeah. It was a wild time, yeah. yeah. But I think um, it, I had an amazing team that I got to work with 
and then um, took a little break from cooking. Burnout was very real. <laughs> yeah. Came back in uh, 2015, worked at Merchant and Restaurant Muramoto as a line cook, I actually. And then um, after I had my son, opened up Morris Ramen. Yeah. Yeah. So Morris Ramen, uh, one of my favorite stories is how the, um, the, the letters of Morris Ramen sort of came about. And I wonder if you could share that story about how, how you figured out which Japanese characters to sort of put on the Yeah, the so <laughs> it's pretty traditional uh, for ramen shops in Japan to be named after the chef. Um, and my, uh, my partner at the time, um, you know, he is a Morris and my son is a Morris. And so naming our first restaurant um, to be part of the family as Morris Ramen felt like the right thing to do. So um, for uh, when we were trying to figure out, you know, how we wanted to put um, the letters onto the Norin, which is a uh, traditional sign. It looks like um, almost a curtain with different paneling. Uh, it turns out that the um, Morris Ramen um, kind of lined up perfectly uh, to be able to be put on that Norin. Um, and that's how it, the name came to be. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're making trout tonight and also squash with both sort of raw and cooked squash. Is it both? Yeah. Is it both here? Yeah. So tell me about how you developed this recipe. So I thought about what is abundant at market right now. What I want, especially when I'm thinking about how to create a dish, I usually want to bring in a lot of different elements um, that I'm kind of a chaotic person. <laughs> so I was like, I want something grilled, a little bit smoky. I want something light. But I also think like fish would be so great this time of year. Uh, and I think summer squash, especially when it's rock, is so delicious. Oh, yeah. um, and you don't need to add a ton to it to bring that squash out. Uh, but also grilling squash squash is such a wonderful summertime tradition. I thought, okay, let's do some grilled squash and raw squash in a salad. Um, but how, how are we going to bring some richness to this dish? And um, a couple years ago, I was super inspired by a book called On Vegetables by Jeremy Fox. Um, and he uh, developed Nori Chef. And I, I love goat cheese and I love eating nori by itself. So it made a lot of sense to bring those kind of earthier, brinier elements to tie together the trout and um, the squash. So that's where I thought about, okay, let's add the chef. And then I knew we needed a good acidic component mm -hmm. and blueberries are in season right now. So they're beautiful, fresh, but they can also, you wanna preserve your blueberries for a little bit longer. Pickling blueberries is such a great way to do that. Yeah. Um, and big shout out to Jenner Farms where there's some of the best blueberries in Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, they're up closer to Stoughton. And so, and pickled blueberries was one of the first things that I learned to make at 43 North. Mm -hmm. Rushing Waters trout uh, was one of the first dishes, uh, one of the first fish I cooked um, with Chef Nick Johnson, who was the mm -hmm. chef before me at 43 North. And so this is kind of, uh, you know, different places that I've gotten in, for, in different people I've gotten inspiration from, but also trying to pay as much homage I can to the current local ingredients that are abundant right now. Nice. Well, hey, where do we want to start? Let's start with the pickled blueberries. All right. So we've got some ready. I wanted to make sure we had some that were pickled in time, but we can uh, go through um, making that here as well. So what I've got is some apple cider vinegar. You can also get apple cider vinegar locally. Um, Morin Orchard has uh, oh, a great apple cider vinegar. Nice. Um, you can also add some apple cider in this if you have it at home. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, not at the moment, but yes, yeah. in general. So we're going to combine. Um, and just bring to a boil some apple cider vinegar, uh, some local Wisconsin maple syrup, just a little bit of sugar, a pinch of Himalayan sea salt, a couple sprigs of rosemary, and then peppercorns. The pickles at Morris are changing constantly, and that's always something that I love. Like every time I'm there, I'm like, whatever the pickles are, I want yeah. them. Uh, but they're always very seasonal. Um, I remember we were going around the farmer's market again for like the book, and you were talking about how oftentimes for things at Morris, there's not a ton at the farmer's market that fits the kind of cuisine that you were doing, mm -hmm. but pickles were ones that always worked. Yeah. You know, there's always something you can pickle. Yeah, so we knew that we wanted to have our corn local all year round, which is uh, kind of a staple for our miso ramen. 
um, that nuttiness of, of the miso and the butteriness of the corn. And we're really fortunate. Um, Alsom Farms oh, has so uh, supplies our corn, <laughs> yeah. frozen corn in the winter, and we have fresh corn um, for uh, late summertime. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the pickles, I think, you know, right now we uh, have um, shishito peppers that are mm -hmm. abundant at market. And I know a lot of folks are growing them in their garden again, which is exciting. Um, we always have a pickled daikon. And then, yeah, we rotate out other ones that are seasonal. Yeah, I've and seen I think radishes. That's yeah, yeah, radishes. Um, uh, sometimes we'll have um, some uh, fruit too. Oh, yeah. And we yeah. also, when we're not pickling things, we're making kimchi with them. So, uh, pickle. It's almost time for peach kimchi at the <gasps> at the restaurant. Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll do apple kimchi in the fall. So we'll take some of the ones that maybe you know aren't getting as much love. Things that might be a little bit bruised or underripe or too mm -hmm. ripe. Um, we'll take out, uh, we'll brine them a little bit in salt and water first, and then add uh, a kimchi paste or kimchi paste to it, um, and let them hang out in the restaurant for a little bit, uh, and then it goes into the cooler, and then we'll serve it up. So I think right now we're at the end of our parsnip kimchi because we saw some of the early parsnips come out, and we thought that. Um, a little kimchi parsnip would be great. So crunchy. But you can pretty much, you yeah. can kimchi so much. I know, bread. right? Like pretty much everything. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wait for this to just come up in the boil. And generally when you're pickling things, there's a salt, uh, a little bit of sugar. Um, you can add water to this as well, but especially since we have such a small amount, um, and I like for these, I mean, these are going to go fast for us. Pickled blueberries are going to go by in like a week. We're going to oh, yeah. eat them all. Um, you don't have to, uh, like, I like to have a more concentrated pickling brine. I like the, anything that sort of extends the life of fresh fruit because I will overbuy because I get excited. That's very real. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> yeah. very real. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I need this, you know. So it's nice to, like, have it last a little bit longer. Yeah. And also a little bit different texture than just raw. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So once that comes to a boil... We'll pour it into here and finish our pickled, pickled blueberries. Now I'm going to show some very, very uh, technical technique and <laughs> how I like to cut nori. So this is um, my favorite nori that you can get at Costco. Uh, but honestly, any you can use an unseasoned nori here too. You'll just want to add a little bit more olive oil if you're following along at home. Um, this one is seasoned, so it has oil and salt on it, which I think just makes this cheese a little bit more delicious. Uh, this is a beautiful um, sheep's milk cheese from Hidden Springs Creamery. I'm also going to do goat cheese. And Hidden Springs very... is the best feta. It's such a it's good It's so feta. good. Um, it's so good. I did call the, the co-op to see yeah. if they had, uh, is it Brebby or Brebis? Brebis from Landmark Creamery. Yeah. yeah. So Landmark is incredible, but mm -hmm. they're a small cheese maker, so there's not a ton of everything yeah. at the time. And I wanted to make sure in the recipe if we were asking for something that people could get it. So I, yeah. called, the, I called the cheese guys, and they were like, we don't have any right now, but call back next week. And I was like, I'm yeah. totally going to remember And you can this. order online, and they have their yeah. um, creamery in Pale Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this is my super technical technique of just cutting right. nori strips. So like... I don't know, I'm Korean. We use scissors to cut scallions. We use scissors to cut nori. We use scissors to cut up meat. I, you know, if it works, it works. I mean, we're not here to judge technique here. I think this is fine. Um, you can absolutely run your knife through this as well. But, I don't know. Because this is going into and being mashed up, I'm not as concerned about having precise strips. But if that's your... If that's your jam, that's totally fine. <laughs> I noticed the amount that you called for and then did like reverse research and fa figured out that it was Kirkland. And I, I put that in the <laughs> recipe. <laughs> I put it in the recipe and I was yeah. like, the Kirkland one. In case you want to like do this exactly, this is where they come from. Um, I, yeah. I just, I think the nori has this like nice earthiness and I don't know, for me, Food that evokes memory is the most delicious food. And like my kid right now, my son George, his favorite thing to eat is nori and rice. And so we always have this around. Um, and one of the ways I'm trying to get him to try new things is to put it into cheese or, you know, say, okay, you can't just have the nori, you have to wrap it in rice I and maybe a piece of yeah. meat too. Yeah. yeah. But absolutely. I mean, I will go through these packs like on my own. Yeah. Just in a sitting. How old is George now? 
George is seven, oh which God. means the restaurant is seven. Um, I say this a lot, try not to open a restaurant and have a baby in the same year, but now I can keep track of uh, how old the restaurant is and how old my kid is. <laughs> the same. The same, yes. All right. So I'm just gonna take that off the heat and let it cool for just a minute. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing so I want this to be just a little bit smoother, and so I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this as well. The cheese is so delicate and lovely on its own, and I do think the kind of fruitiness of the olive oil and then the earthiness of the nori, it's a really, really nice balance. And the nori has a little bit of sesame on it too, right? A little bit of sesame, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. <gasps> All right. I want to put that on a bagel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found a new bagel guy. Monroe a Street new Farm bagel? Yeah, the Grocery Farmers Market Barrett's Bagel. Ooh. Yeah, I just went there on Sunday. Yes. Nice. He was very cool. And I, I got like all the different types of bagels. And I was like, I am one human being eating all these bagels. But this is going to be fine. I'll just one a day. Yo, I love mermaid bagels too. Ooh. Mermaid yeah. I just had their cacio and pepe bagel the other day. So great. It's the bagel trend. Though. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Another really fun thing about now that we're on this, you know, yeah. I'm thinking about seaweed right now. I was just telling Lauren this story, too. Um, it is not only delicious to eat, but it may help us capture methane gas in the air. Right? It's supposed to be really good for the climate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because if they feed it to cows and the cows fart less, you got less methane in the air. Well, I'm, there was a study on this. Look it up, UC that Davis. amazing. Yeah. I, I appreciate those UC Davis people for doing that. Good for them. Well, now we're going to try to see people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have everyone do more nori snacks. More nori snacks. Yeah. All awesome. right. So this is a uh, LeClaire goat cheese. So I'm going to be um, putting both the goat cheese and sheep's milk cheese for folks to have on their plate with the trout. Oh, the cheese maker is Katie LeClaire, I want to say. I think so, yeah. yeah. There are not very many women who make cheese, but we've got two amazing, um, and then uh, uh, Dream Farm. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, Dream Farm's goat cheese is yeah. delicious. So we've got phenomenal uh, cheesemongers and folks. Now we got the Annas over at Landmark Creamery are making butter too. So yeah. You can get... I need to go down to the, I, I've been down and I've had some of the ice creams and things, but I haven't had the butter yet. But I really want to. It's. <gasps> yes, this is, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> My life is great. Ooh. Um, I think I like that one even better. Yeah, the mm -hmm. goat cheese? Mm hmm All right. It's very tangy. Yeah. You know? And the tanginess is actually really lovely with the with the seaweed. All right. So. I feel like with things like this, I'm always tempted to overcomplicate and throw in something that it doesn't need. You know? In, like, the pickling liquid or? In pickling liquid, but also in this kind of thing. Like, I'd be like, oh, what about sesame seed? You know, I just, I feel like I always oh, am yeah, yeah. adding too many things. I overcomplicate when I cook. It's a I think it's pretty trick. natural to do. I mean, this was, what, three ingredients each? But when they're all three things that you really love and are delicious. Yeah. Like, like we know that it's going to be anymore. delicious. Yeah. Right? Right, exactly. Okay. So now we're going to get our squash ready. So I've got some in ribbons here. Um, so for folks following along at home, if you've got a couple of squash, you'll want to use a, either a peeler or a mandolin to get them pretty thin. And I want them thin because they're going to be raw on the plate. You have a you have a wide peeler here. I do. This is I my have favorite. A mandolin at home. Mandolin, mandolin mm -hmm. at home. Um, and my husband has made me get a metal glove because I kept. So fun story about mandolins, <laughs> the, the, or probably the last time I was in the ER was because I sliced my hand uh, you using a mandolin. Slicing it or would you just, because one of the times I cut myself, I just grabbed the darn oh, thing. Oh no, I was, I was slicing, I think I was putting potatoes, but it was the first time I learned that there's like skin glue. <laughs> or it changed something. <laughs> 
I mean, Ben Hunter was here, like, talking about harvesting animals, so, you know. Oh. Uh -huh. it was, oh, Ben and Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Good dudes. It but, was, yeah, they, if they want to get graphic, I guess. My editor uh, on the other end of things was yeah. like, no, 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 please make it stop. I was like, eh, it's okay. It's reality. But yeah, so you're using a, a Y peeler and you're just getting like, what is it, yeah, a quarter so inch just, maybe? Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. I just, I want to be able to get them nice rolls. Um, and we're just going to have them hang out in the dressing. That's good here. Make sure we have plenty of squash for everyone. Squash is so delicious right now. Um, and there's so much of it at market, and it's like the more, you know, the t all the different recipes that you can try out for it, and then you keep buying it. And mm -hmm. It just helps us all eat more seasonally because it's hard. Like, yeah. I'm gonna get probably tired of squash in a couple of weeks here, but <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop frying it, grilling it, eating it raw. And they're not so big right now. I think the really, really big zucchinis, like baseball that size, can get kind of watery. And these are lovely right now. They're yeah. great size. Some of I, I like the smaller squash, but if they got big squash too, it's you know you gotta love those as well. <laughs> great for stews. Um, mm. Putting them in like you know treating, you can do squash parmesan instead of eggplant parmesan. Um, all right, so we're gonna get our dressing going here for the squash salad. So I've got. Uh, shallot. I'm just gonna peel and get these on uh, thinly sliced. Some of the best shallots at market are at Young Earth Farm. I don't know if you know uh, Shirley, Shirley, but yeah. Shirley's uh, she's got the ambulance truck that she oh. turned into her like cooler. Hi, Ruby. Hi. <laughs> um, which is awesome, and uh, her shallots are magical. They're I don't know. They're just sweeter yeah. than a lot of the other shallots that I've had. And so I like to use those in salads and not cook with them as much. Um, and then. Oh, I love that. Yeah. This is the time of year where I think about alliums as just sort of being all interchangeable. So like whatever I happen to get from the farm, I'm like, mm -hmm. I guess it's uh, small red onions today or like garlic scapes or whatever. Yeah. Like it's just sort of like this rotating allium. I'm like, what do I have? I'll use that, you know? Absolutely. But I love the idea of a sweeter kind of shallot that's not yeah. as bitey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna add some shallots and then just emulsify a little bit of, so, you know, there's like pickling liquid that's undoubtedly left. You can absolutely use that in your salad oh, dressing. So that's yeah, what we're yeah. gonna do here. Yeah. I love that, like using that extra. Um, you know, was it Gabrielle Hamilton squash? Um, zucchini top recipe like mm. the more we can figure out how to utilize all different parts of the vegetable things that we cook with um, so I'm just gonna thinly slice shallots where did your knife come from this is Matt's knife so my husband Matt probably he was a sushi chef before he was a ramen chef and he is probably gonna murder me for using his deba, which is traditionally used for fish, on these shallots right now. Oh no! But it's my favorite knife of his, and he said I could borrow his knives, and he didn't specify which ones I could or could not use. So we are using the deba on these shallots. Um, it also, like, the weight of a deba to me feels the best in my hand, and, uh, you know. It has kind of a, a broader top, yeah. and then the narrow, like it, the shape of it is really interesting. So it's it's traditionally used for um, cleaning fish, deboning, taking off the skin, all of the above. Um, but today, we're using it to cut shallots. Um, to work, to work. Right? So we've got a little bit of Dijon mustard. I like to use cops. Um, <laughs> it's local. I think it tastes great. If you have other mustard around, you can use a stone ground too. I found um, they didn't have my favorite driftless uh, organic sunflower oil, mm. but I found some walnut oil instead, which is not necessarily neutral, but still great for mm -hmm. salads. And that nuttiness actually goes really well with grilled things. And so yeah. since we're gonna be grilling some of the squash too, I figured, all right, let's, uh, let's make it work here. I'm just gonna remind everyone that no questions yet, which means there is a bottle of wine up for grabs. <laughs> 
Oh, it could be your get wine. Some wine. Ask some questions to our chef and to Lindsay here. We wanna we wanna answer them and give you. You can ask whatever you'd like. I am an open book. Doesn't need to be related to food. What? Putting it out there. <laughs> Nah, like, it's, this has to go through me. It's I'm, fine. I'm, I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah. I was just told I couldn't drop the F bomb. So that's <laughs> that's what I'm sticking that to is, when it comes I to yeah. So I we, mean we, I can, but <laughs> so don't tempt her with a question. Um, so we added just a couple tablespoons of the uh, blueberry brine liquid. I'm gonna pour in some of this walnut oil. And I'm not overly concerned here about having a perfect emulsion. I want the squash to sit in more of this flavor. Um, but you could use an immersion blender here if you'd like. And ideally you wanna go about three to one your fat to acid ratio in your dressings. If you have extra wallet oil hanging around after you've made this beautiful recipe, I have an apple cake I make every single fall with wallet oil in it, and it's amazing. Yum. Apple cake with wallet oil. It's very good. That's why I, I have was it on um, I was thinking about The nice thing about using the brine is that you, there's less seasoning that you have to do afterwards uh, because yeah. the brine already has the sugar, the salt, the rosemary, the peppercorns, um, and it's helping to bring together mm. the dish. So I'm gonna pour this over the squash and just let this hang out. And then we've got a hot grill behind us and some beautiful patty pans. Depending on how long you make mm -hmm. this in advance, like yeah. how far ahead, can the squash to break down? Do you only want to leave it for a certain amount of time? I wouldn't, yeah. I would not have this sit around for more than 15, 20 minutes. Got it, okay. Yeah. Because some of the salt is going to start to bring out the water in yep. the squash. Yep, that's what I was thinking about. Um, and then it's going to also kind of dilute a little bit of the dressing too. So for me, I, this is pretty, you know, we're going to... Uh, we're just letting this hang out so that we don't have to season it when it goes on the plate. It's so pretty. I love the colors. <laughs> I have to say, it's... Um, Do you need water, love? Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, not a question, but a comment. Someone says, thanks for having tasty vegan ramen at the restaurant. Ooh. My favorite. Oh. We love our vegan friends. We also have um, uh, vegan ramen. It can be spicy. And then there's also gluten-free ramen. Because I learned our lieutenant governor is gluten-free. And she was asking about coming in. So, yeah. That's We've got, very hard to do, I think, right? Gluten-free ramen is hard. It is. But you can interchange the soy, which almost a lot of the times will have um, gluten in it. Yes. Uh, we interchange that with a shio tare or a salt-based flavoring, and then um, because our ramen stock has no, is just uh, the proteins, the vegetables, um, we don't, and there's no salt or gluten in that, we can mix the shio tare with the broth, and then we have a gluten-free noodle. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, we've got some beautiful patty pan squash here. These are so cute. Patty pans are so cute. <laughs> Little jewels. I'm just gonna drizzle them with some oil before they hit the grill. A little bit of salt. Thank you. Let me see what I need to do here. Do you want to move these over here? What do you think? I feel. Yeah. We'll okay. use them for plating later. Thank okay. you. And get them on the grill cut up a couple more here. I was like, I knew I was going to demo some other. This is the thing that I've seen chefs do that I tend to forget, which is when you're chopping something, you make that flat surface. Because stuff rolls around on me, and <laughs> I forget to do that. But you cut the bottom off there, see? And it a little stays, makes it stay. Exactly. It's, uh, 
it's wild how science can be so rational and reasonable sometimes. <laughs> yeah, gosh. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Like, like, why is the watermelon rolling? Well, make a flat surface. <laughs> It's not your knife that's gonna slip, it's the thing that you're cutting that's gonna move. Um, and these don't need a ton of time on the grill. Again, I like to make sure our veggies have um, a little bit more bite to them, but if you like your squash like a little bit softer, you can just roast them off or grill them off and then pop them in an oven. Or if oh, you're yeah. outside and you wanna give them more time, you can just put them on a pan and put them on that top layer and let them finish cooking. Nice. So that you don't overcook or you don't like burn on the grill. All right salt a little bit more of the pieces that I put on. Come over here. They look like little wedges of lemon <laughs> on the grill. You know, I rarely got to cook. I think Mormona was the only kitchen, no, Gray's had a grill. Magnus, I was only on the cold side, ah. so I did not see a ton of grill time there. Was it Magnus during the um, Scandinavian Norwegian year? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I was a part of a lot of restaurant like openings or transitioning concepts, um, which was great, but you kind of sometimes see like not the greatest in people when ah. they're having to <laughs> undergo um a big transition but it's stressful it is but i also like i don't know i learned so much from tori at grace um and it was the first time i was in a kitchen with someone that looked like me ah so that was really cool um and i feel like he always um I don't know. He saw that I was trying in ways that I didn't even know I was trying. This one time I still remember, um, I deviated from the recipe, which do not do if you're working under a chef. <laughs> um, but I added, I, I thought maybe there was a little bit too much dill. So I, I, you know, I added less than what they had asked for. And um, he was like, who made this ranch? Why does it taste so good? And he called out the other Korean in the room. But like I never, I never deviated from the recipe after that because I was terrified. <laughs> um, but it worked. It did. I don't know if it's still the same ranch recipe now, but yeah. That's All really right. funny. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get the rest of these on here and let them hang out. Can you help me flip some of these? You got it, girl. All right. There I am, just really logically thinking here how. I'm gonna get all these little guys grilled. You're gonna hand it off like yep. I'm a good chef. Delegation is key. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to the best. Oh, good it's good to have this. Wild 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 um, it's chaos. We it's can catch them right in this pan. But Perfect. You saw the really great order I did that in. So Beautiful. ideally, you want to start on one end and then know which one you did first and then flip <laughs> over after you put the last one down. But me and my chaotic mind was just like, find space, make a home for the squash. Sure. But I think that our grill is hot enough where... I'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Let's go deal with some trout. So why Rushing Waters Trout? <laughs> I work for a chef, Nick Johnson. He's still in Madison, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he loved trout. And I, he had this trout dish that we were doing with um, barley and uh, mm. this like brown butter sauce. And it was mm. the first time I worked with trout um, and I was really afraid to um, pick this dish up on the line because the first night of 43 North opening, it was one of the worst, like it was a friends and family night. So it's like when you wanna have your rehearsal dinner um, for uh, the restaurant before it's open to the public. It was probably one of the worst nights of my life. Like truly, I mean, there were folks who didn't, who never got food. Oh, we gosh. didn't like it was. It was awful. Um, but I 
thought I was working garmage or like doing a lot of the cold appetizers, right? So um, building a salad, I think I was responsible for picking up a dessert as well. Um, but all of a sudden I'm told to go pick up a fish and I had never like, I had never pan seared a fish in my life. Like, granted, like I dropped out of school to cook and just learn from rest people who worked in restaurants. And I picked up techniques here and there and read a lot, but like I never picked up uh, a trout. Like I'd never d done a fish pickup before. So um, yeah, I chef told me to get on the line to um, pick up the, uh, I think it was, I wanna say it was snapper. Um, but my pan wasn't hot enough, things were sticking, I was freaking out, the fish like couldn't go out, he had to have somebody else step in and take over, I was mortified, it was like super traumatizing. Oh my god. So, yeah, I, <laughs> after that I just like always like really hesitated to cook fish, um, but when Nick was like, look, this is, there are a couple things you gotta know, make sure that the skin slide down, you're gonna pat so that your skin is dry. Your pan is hot enough. And use a shit ton of butter. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. That's great. I still find this to this day fish yeah. intimidating. Um, my husband and I were like, we're gonna cook, we're gonna cook every available fish at the Willie Street Co-op. Like we decided we were just gonna do that, like all of them that they had, and we kept a running list because I needed to push myself mm. to do it. Because otherwise, yeah. I'd be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I, you know, I want to mess it up. It's it's expensive and beautiful, and it came here from far away. But like, what's the worst that could happen when you mess it up? You're like, you still know how to make it taste good. I mean, yeah, not, I would, you're I gonna would pair 100 great wine with still it. eat her. Yeah, I would, I would very much still eat it. That's a good point. I always still eat it because yeah. it's oh, in your God, house, you know? So, Speaking of that, mm -hmm. Carol wants to know where you get your trout and where's a good place to get fresh fish in Madison. Ooh. Yeah, great question. Um, this is from Rushing Waters Fishery, um, and you can get it uh, at the Willie Street Co-op, east, west, and north. Um, I... I think the co-op has a great fr uh, fresh fish selection. Um, I like to go to Jenny Street Market too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then anytime there's a truck that comes through that like parks <gasps> in front of a grocery store yeah. or a liquor store like and it's shrimp like truck shrimp or, or fish yeah. or like randomly pitch, like peaches, great right? Stuff, yeah. yeah, go to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to that for sure. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm gonna They're in our... Palmyra and for a while I know, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is still true, but you could go there and like there was a restaurant there and whole yep. thing. A couple of great fisheries in Wisconsin. Red Cliff has fantastic white fish and you mm. can order online right from the produce, the fisheries as well. So you can go to Rushing Waters website and order fish. You can go to Red Cliff's web website and order fish. And I recently was in Door County and met the um, Bay Creek, uh, Bay, yeah, Bay Creek Fisheries. Um, They've got uh, yellow perch and white Ooh. fish is their, their like specialty. Sturgeon Bay? Yeah. Yeah. In Sturgeon Bay, and they supply more of the perch to New York than what New York uh, wow. like supplies to their, their restaurants and stores. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wait for our pan to get hot. Add oil. It's also important to Pat have... Pat a dry skin side yeah. down. Lots of butter. Okay. Yeah. I like, like using a fish thatch as well. Oh. I think these are super handy. Even if you don't like, they're, it's called a fish thatch, but you can use it for pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, and I think the really nice thing about trout too is that you can eat the skin, which is why it's always really important uh. to season the skin as well and not just the flesh side. But we're gonna sear these um, first skin side down. And you wait for your oil to get extra shiny. You don't want it to be smoking because that will, like right before your smoking point is when you want to add your fish uh, so that you don't have that like blackened parts and then some parts that aren't yeah. well browned. I've done that. <laughs> and then I've got my butter ready. Do you want it oh. shimmering? Shimmering. That is... It's like you've written a cookbook <laughs> before or something. 
<laughs> I'm always looking but for yes, like, the cues. What are the cues, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's mad because I took that off. Oh, okay. yeah. Gotta yeah. Make this have the butter ready. And especially because these are pretty thin, you can see, you only have to cook them on one side. And then I like to flip them and then turn the heat off. And then basically it's like resting and continuing to cook in the pan. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also baste it with butter. And then it just makes things, Sounds everything delicious. better. Yeah. Everything is better with butter. Um, be liberal with salt and butter. I know we gotta watch nutrition and stuff, but like- It's fish. When you, it's fish. <laughs> and fish loves butter and fish loves salt. It's so, if I was I mean, talking to a fish, that was probably what it would tell me. Please, even I love butter salt and butter. Yes. Yeah, totally. I love that um, one of your first like big culinary adventures was making Thanksgiving. Yes. You talk, you've talk, talk, talked about that before. And just like taking that on as a big project. If people are like new to cooking, is that the kind of thing you recommend that they do? Like just, just jump in? I think cooking for like a group of four or six, you know, there's a lot of organizing that you have to do beforehand. Mm -hmm. And what I love about, you know, it's, it's what I still do to feel grounded mm. is knowing that you went in and there was prep, there was service. So when you're cooking the things to, you know, right before you present it to um, whoever you're having the meal with, um, the cleanup afterwards and the satisfaction, there's such a beautiful finality to it. Mm. And like not all of us have work, at least my current day job, there's very little finality to that work. <laughs> yes. Actually, no finality to that word. It just feels like endless absurdity. Um, but I think that's kind of the Still beauty of the meal is that you feel nourished, you help somebody else feel nourished, and there's this like closure, that finality that we mm. don't always get in a lot of things in life. Yeah. You were talking yeah. about Chef Tori earlier, and one thing that I, that I'm sure he was quoting somebody else, it's come down, but it's, he says we can change what we can touch. And I like, I like that idea of like things that are manageable. Yeah. Like this is, this can be manageable. Yeah. Absolutely. And challenging too, but manageable. For sure. All right, so we're almost there. I'm like watching how we do, and thank you so much. We're I'm like done. having you Ooh. hang out are on we, this. This looks beautiful. Chat? This looks beautiful. All right. So yeah, this is exactly what you want. I mean, they're fork tender. If you pop a, a tweezer or a fork through them, they've got great char. And I think, I'm hoping that y'all will enjoy the balance of the grill, the raw, um, and a little brininess. And so that's mm -hmm. ultimately, I kind of wanted, summer is like you have such an abundance, so we want a dish that gives you a lot. Yeah. If you're outside on the grill, would you do fish in a pan on the grill? You could absolutely grill the fish. Yeah. I would oil this first, though, mm -hmm. um, before it hits your grill. Got it. Yeah. Okay. See how the fish starts to shrink right away, which is why I'm just giving it a, a gentle, gentle um, uh, push. Yeah, it wants to curl sometimes, mm -hmm. I've noticed. Yeah, so once that, like the, the skin hits the oil and starts to shrink, you just wanna make sure that all of the, um, all of the surface is touching the pan because of it shrinking. Okay, I'll wash my hands quick, let that hang out. I was gonna say, as a person without chef hands that are impervious, I would probably use this. <laughs> what? No, I didn't notice the chefs who, who do the series, they'll just be like grabbing stuff out of the freaking pizza oven. I'm like, what are you doing? There's no, there's no nerve endings anymore. Oh yeah, no, yeah. those are gone. <laughs> yeah. Those it's are a thing. Gone. And so I'm I'm constantly being like, don't do that. Um <laughs> like don't touch the thing. I mean right. maybe do. I don't know. When I was a barista I didn't have feeling in my fingers for a while. And then it came back. Um yours came back? Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for mine. I mean, I was the only barista for like eight years, so it's such a hard job. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. It's like I, I had the blast because I just knew everybody by their orders. That's, yeah. 
All right, so I know there are some <laughs> folks who work at the Capitol with me maybe watching. I still don't know everybody's name, Name-tag. but I know what their order is when they come into the restaurant. See? Yeah. There you go. That's exactly right. that. So. Look at that. That's beautiful. We're going to let the butter cook in there, too. And then after I flip it, I'll start basting it and then let it rest on some paper towel lined pans. And then we are going to be pretty much ready to wait. Paper towels. I'm looking around to see. So the butter can be salted butter? Or is that this is an unsalted butter. Um, since we liberally salted our fish beforehand, mm, towels. And generally when I'm basting, Just I only use a little bit. salted oh, butter. I guess okay. Um, most of the oh, proteins, yeah. like when you baste the steak and stuff too, mm. hopefully you've liberally salted and peppered your steak before it goes in the pan. Just want a few um, extra, thank and you. then you uh, will baste with the unsalted butter. Okay, and then this. someone wants to know what the heat you have the burner on. I have heat at medium high. Yeah. So I think it's going to depend. This is an induction, so it's fairly um, like precise. Uh, if you've got gas or electric at home, medium high. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Flip and fish. Ooh, a little bit of brown on there is beautiful. We've seen this technique before with steak as Mm. well. You can do the butter basted steak. Uh, Pip Freeman did that. And I also have done this technique with eggs. Oh yeah. It's great. Oh, yeah. It makes, Molly Boz calls them frisbee eggs because they're Ooh. fried and crispy. Mm-hmm. I love really that. Good. All right, so while I'm going to let the trout just finish cooking for what, maybe like this one was a little bit. Someone wants to know if you ever put squash or sweet potato in ramen. We have not. Unless somebody stuck in a special, um, we haven't done a squash or sweet potato ramen. We have put squash in our, um, so we have a cold ramen. I was going to say, it's been in the cold yeah. ramen. Yeah, the Hiyashi Chuka, but mm-hmm. not in the hot ramen. Um, that's a good idea, though. We had, we used to do guest chef series um, where folks would bring, uh, we'd have a guest chef from a different restaurant come in and do a ramen, and we'd do, it would give us a chance to do a special ramen as well. And um, we had, uh, it was Chef Molly, I think, did a lamb ramen. Ooh, Molly Machewski from Madison Sourdough. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think that would have been really delicious with, like, a squash nice. topping, too. All right. So we, these are my snack and bloobs. Can I get out your way? My pickle bloobs are going to get ready to plate. Take my offset spatula here and put some of the last sheep's milk cheese on, or that was a goat milk, sorry, and then the sheep's milk. Ooh, both. I love it. Mm-hmm. Again, love we're you. thinking abundance here, so <laughs> try it all. Um, we've got. Summer in Wisconsin. This is why the top chefs are yeah. coming, you know? It's the abundance of summer. I was wondering when you were going to bring yeah, up the top, top chef. I just want to say, about that? a PSA, I cannot help you get on the show. I cannot, I it cannot help you. Um, that PSA extends to me as well. I don't you know. I can't, there are tickets. I can't get you no. tickets. I don't know. <laughs> we just got to give big shout outs to Destination Madison and oh, yeah. Travel Wisconsin and all the folks who work really hard to get them here. Yeah, for at least a year, I think. It's been a well, long time coming. It's like Wisconsin, like, folks still think so much. It's beer and cheese and it's so much more. Yeah. Um, and I think 
you know, I'm so I'm hoping that they'll go check out some of the ginseng farms. Yes. All of our beautiful dairies and creameries. I want to see some like fish boil challenges. Oh, I want to see. Yeah. I want to see them like fishing on Lake Michigan. Like I think that would be really cool because often they make the chefs like get their own ingredients. Like right? go fishing for it, grow it, whatever. There's probably gonna be a supper. A supper, a supper club, club challenge. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yes, right. So I mean, you've probably known about this for much longer than me. Best I don't guess. Know. I don't know. Why does what? everyone think I know everything? <laughs> because we think. Okay. I'm not I'm not saying, I'm just saying, I just think that the embargoes are gonna be real. Like when they finally come to shoot here, yeah. there's gonna be a lot of rules about what we're allowed to say <laughs> and when we're allowed to say it. I'm just guessing. So but I think I think it'll be really cool to recognize all the B roll. Yeah. Like, I'm really excited yeah. for the B-roll. Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> nah. Like, I think that's uh, great. I mean, people want the story behind the story mm -hmm. always, right? I mean, you're a journalist. That's Heck what yeah. going after. Um, all right, so we've got some beautiful curly cues of the raw zucchini. I like to plate things in odd numbers. It's just one of the few superstitions I have. Um, I think things look better on a plate in an odd number, but honestly, you can be, like, you can put things wherever you'd like. Um, so, good amount of the patty pans, and then... Is that four patty ahead. pans, though? That's not odd. Oh, oh. my gosh! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> See, you gotta go. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> All right. We're gonna Ooh. just place your trout wherever you like, and then we've got some beautiful basil. I'm gonna finish with a little drizzle of um, the olive oil or the walnut oil. Oh, that'll be so aromatic when it hits that fish. It'll be so pretty. Um, and just kind of let these fall wherever they want to fall. And it'll be nice for folks. I hope you just get a little pop of the blueberry as you're trying. I always like to make sure that, you know, each component of a dish should taste delicious on its own and mm. all together. Um, basil is great here as a finishing garnish. Um, there's lemon basil from Love Food. If folks Ooh. go check out um, David Stand. Uh, but Thai basil would be great here too, um, just to finish with a little brightness. I remember you had a theory about which side of the farmer's market was like the most expensive. <laughs> still love that. <laughs> All right. And there you have it. Trout. Let's, let's take a look. All right. Right up here. Ooh, you guys can yeah. see that. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that's gorgeous. Yay. Yay. That is beautiful. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm going to cook the rest of this trout so we All can right. feed everybody. Wow, that was so timely. It's 6.52. Hey, oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Amazing. We did we did get a couple questions that oh, we yeah, yeah. interrupt for, but Linda wanted to know if you have a preference for cooking with gas, electric, or induction, Ooh. and why. Ooh. Um, I it definitely used to be gas, and then um, I started getting spoiled by the precision of induction. But it's like not seeing fire feels weird. Mm. So I, I would say right now I prefer induction, but um, definitely was gas first. And I think just, especially when you need to have a pan get hot right away, like gas, speaking of which. <laughs> I okay, I think, it's going. I think we're gonna give the bottle of wine to Linda who asked that question because you had to wait a while. Thank you for asking, thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you to everyone else who watched online. Thank you to all the Cap Times members who joined us in person. Yay. Again, if you would like to join us for a future episode of Cooking with the Cap Times, you can become a member at membership.captimes.com and then you'll receive an invite in your email before the next event. Thank you one more time to our sponsors, Kesnick's our official kitchen sponsor where you can shop like a chef, and to Leopold's Books Bar Cafe, our wine pairing sponsor, per for providing us with this beautiful wine that we're about to try with this wonderful dish. And thank you to our chef, Francesca Hong, for making this yeah. wonderful dish for us. Thank you Yay. so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs>